Good morning, everyone. I'd like to call to order the November 8th, 2023 Clackamas County Board of Commissioners business meeting and County Administrator Gary Schmidt will do the roll call. Thank you, Commissioner Schrader. First, the staff support today, County Council Stephen Madcor, Clerk to the Board, Tony Mayernick. Commissioners Savas and Schull are attending other events today representing Clackamas County, so they are not in attendance. Chair Smith is online today, so you do have a quorum. Chair Smith, though, has asked Commissioner Schrader to chair today's business meeting. So with that, roll call online, Chair Smith. Here. In the room, Commissioner West. Here. Commissioner Schrader. Here. Thank you, and I will now lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. We are holding this meeting in person and virtually. If you've joined us via Zoom for this meeting and are interested in providing public comment, we will prompt you regarding how to do that when the time is right. General public comment will be taken at the usual allotted time. And we are holding our meeting today uh, on Wednesday uh, because the county observes Veterans Day this year on Thursday, November 9th, and most county offices will be closed tomorrow. I would like to remind all participants, including staff, all elected officials, and members of the public that Robert's Rules of Order will be enforced in this business meeting. We welcome your opinions and look forward to your polite participation. Gary, can you introduce the first item, please? Yes, Commissioner Schrader. First is a presentation recognizing Veterans Day here in Clackamas County. Presenting is Joey Johns and Jennifer Harvey from the county's Health, Housing, and Human Services Department. Please come forward. Okay, thank you. So my name is Joey Johns, uh, Human Services Manager with Clackamas County. And uh, first off, I'd just like to say this presentation is, you know, important due to the fact of all the veterans that are in the room and the veterans that have served our community. And I just want to give thanks for that and thanks for having us today. So the first slide we show the, you know, the veterans in Oregon, the veterans in Clackamas County, the known houseless veterans in Oregon, which is 1,439 and that we have 59 known unsheltered veterans that are in our community. And that's a 22.36 decrease from the previous count of last year that was 76. This de decline could be attributed to the increased resources post-pandemic and the ongoing collaboration efforts between the county departments and local nonprofits serving the veterans community. And then I'll go ahead and turn it over to my co-host here, Jennifer. Next slide. Good morning, commissioners. My name is Jennifer Harvey. I'm with Children, Family, and Community Connections, and I manage the workforce programs. I'm here today to talk a little bit about um, our veteran employment programs. We served 41 veterans last year. 27 obtained employment and retained their employment for at least 90 days. The average wage was just over $24 an hour. This year, Children, Family, and, and Community Services partnered with social services to collaborate and produce a brochure covering the three major veteran employment programs, a housing program, and also our veteran service office. So we have copies of these brochures that we've passed out to the veterans in the room, and we have copies that we've given to Tony to provide to you so that you can provide those um, brochures to anyone you encounter that may need some information about services that the county provides for our veterans. Every year I typically tell you about the success of veterans who have engaged in our employment services and this year I wanted to talk a little bit about our Department of Labor grant serving homeless veterans. Through that grant we have provided veteran specific peer support services at Veterans Village six hours each week to support substance use recovery and mental health for veterans enrolled in our employment program. 
This aligns directly with the recovery-oriented systems of care model that is supported by this board. I also wanted to highlight the H3S training around suicide prevention. Our direct service staff are building trusting relationships with veterans who are joining our employment programs. We all know that there's a very high incidence of suicide among our veteran community, and so this prevention is very important to us. They're addressing substance use and mental health, including discussing risk factors and talking about protective measures when needed. This past spring, we had two veterans reach out to their veterans workforce specialists to ask for help for themselves or their family members who were expressing thoughts of self-harm. Because of these trusting relationships and the prevention work that we do around suicide prevention, staff were able to get quick help for these veterans. Now I'll turn it over to Joey to talk about the Veterans Service Organization. All right, thank you, Jennifer. So the VSO office, first I want to point out Gus Bedwell, the amazing supervisor over that office behind me, and the amazing work that the veteran service officers are doing on a daily basis in that department. So um, last year they generated $9.4 million in new federal monetary benefits, uh, saw 250 more individuals, families, and veterans, um, also filed 269 more claims than the year prior. Uh, the VOS staff met with uh, 1,884 veterans and family members. Uh, the Veteran Service Office filed 1,197 comp compensation claims, including appeals. Uh, the VSO office has been understaffed for the entire year, and they were still able to accomplish those numbers and help that many families and veterans. Um, also, the VSO consistently says, due to significant uh, benefits changing legislation in 2022, just because in the past you were told that you were ineligible for benefits, today you might be entitled to benefits to better serve your families. Um, this is due to the PACT Act and the Compact Act. Next slide. So as far as like ending veterans homelessness, uh, there's a couple different programs and housing options that are in Clackamas County. One of those is Clayton Moore Commons, which was a collaborative effort between Northwest Housing Alternatives, the Housing Authority of Clackamas County, and the case management is provided by Do Good Multnomah. Um, property management is provided by Quantum, uh, and they do the lease enforcement at that property. So this is a permanent supportive housing uh, units targeting chronically homeless and low-income veterans in our local community. The project serves 24 units and currently houses 27 veterans. A veterans Village, since opening in 2018, uh, the village has served 99 veterans, at 43 of whom have since moved into permanent housing like Clayton Moore Commons. Um, the village can shelter 24 veterans at a time and the primary goal of that work is to stabilize with transitional housing and move, in, move into permanent housing and hopefully like stabilize the veterans so they don't re-enter our homeless continuum. Um, next slide. So in the social services program um, within Clackamas County serving veterans, we have a couple different options. We have housing our heroes, we have permanent supportive housing, veterans rapid rehousing, and houseless veterans outreach, which uh, one of the supervisors that works for me, Liesl, does a fantastic job working with her staff and the veterans that are serving our community. Um, so far last year, they housed 66 homeless veterans household in the last fiscal year. Um, 73 adults housed in these totals. 13 children were housed in those to totals also. You know, and with collaboration with housing and community development, you know, vouchers, VASH vouchers that serve veterans, um, they housed 104 households as of October 16th when we made this presentation. Um, VASH P PVV units that are identified and need veterans place, there was 10 units that were currently open that they were working to fill. Um, in 2024, those vouchers are going to increase from 146 vouchers that we currently have to 171 vouchers. And this increase is going to like provide much more needed resource for our houseless veteran continuum. Um, and yeah, I think that that's it. And we'll open it up for questions. Thank you. Great. Um, well, let me just first say thank you for being here today. I remember um, a number of years ago starting to work with the Guard and the Reserve. And uh, we were 
experiencing folks coming back from Iraq and Afghanistan who uh, actually were coming from war zones and then not necessarily getting the appropriate integration services back into the community. And I think that's when we really started to move ahead in this county to really prioritize veteran services. Um, I see a number of our veterans in the audience today. Thank you for coming today. Thank you for your service. Thank you for uh, really supporting our country and making us safe and secure. And also I wanna thank our staff because we, I think, of course, I'm a little biased here. I, I think um, we have one of the best VSO programs in the state. I think that our outreach is stellar. And we have also not only uh, worked with our veterans on the ground, we have a very close relationship with Clackamas Community College. And uh, we were also instrumental, thanks to your work as staff, in instituting, a, you know, having a veteran center there. So it is one of their priorities uh, to make sure that our veterans also get the education they need as they move into uh, getting jobs and, uh, you know, really becoming prosperous in our county. So thank all of you so much for this. And I'm going to turn it over to my colleague Ben. Would you like to say a few words? Oh, Chair, Gary's going to say something first. Oh, to Chair speak. Smith. Sorry, Chair Smith. Here we are. That's why we have Gary here to remind me to stay on task, okay? <laughs> Chair Smith. Yes, uh, thank you, Martha. And you can call on Ben first. It doesn't matter. Thank you for chairing the meeting today. I want to salute all the veterans uh, across Oregon, Clackamas County, especially those in the meeting today. I apologize for not being there, but I am not feeling well. And in my quest to keep other people from being infected, Martha has graciously agreed to chair the meeting for us. Um, thank you for all your good work. I remember a time on the County Commission when we had barely 50 to 60 vouchers. Now we're up to 171, and that increased from last year. Thank you for all the good work um, you folks did to secure those veterans' vouchers because it's very, very important to a very important uh, group of people. Thank you all for coming today. The, the presentation was wonderful. Uh, I, veterans, just know that you have the dedication from the Board of County Commissioners to keep these programs ongoing in Clackamas County. Thank you for your service. Great. Commissioner West. <clears throat> uh, thank you, um, Commissioner Schrader. A uh, question, a um, couple, couple thoughts and questions with your presentation is, uh, I think you said 54 known homeless veterans currently in Clackamas County. Is that correct? 56. 56 known. So we're seeing improvement. Um, we'd like to see that to zero. Yep. Um, what are some of the challenges or what are some of the things we can do as a county to bring um, the necessary supports to get that veteran off the streets and on a pathway to stability and self-sufficiency. Are, are we thinking about that? Do we need more capacity in our veterans village? Do we not have, uh, do we do we have a lack of service providers? Do, are they, uh, do, do is, it, is it additional treatments around mental health and, and getting and getting the treatment they need to be stable? All of the above. I didn't know if we're planning and strategizing on how to reach out to those 56 members. Yeah, I think, as a totality, it is a large subject. There is needed access with shelter. There is needed access within the mental health continuum, within treatment, you know, within all of those areas. And there is a plan for us to be able to outreach those 56 that are on the by name list and do a better job of collaborating with housing and community development to utilize that with those vouchers. Because of, you know, federal changeover with the PACT Act, it actually has made it easier to house many of those veterans. So that is one of the targeted approaches that we're gonna take this coming year to try to see if we can really reduce that outcome. Are, are many of those veterans not ready for housing? Like they have significant mental health or substance abuse issues where we they're falling in the gaps because they're just not quite stable to get to that level of housing. I'm, I'm just trying to understand the population we're still left dealing with. From, just from a minimal vision, just because I'm not, working directly with them at this current time. Mm -hmm. I would say there's definitely a percentile that that is the case, right? And we need to do really approach that with better wraparound services. But I think that just outreach and having the buoyant staff to do that outreach and really like figure out 
what these veterans need to stabilize and help them navigate these complicated systems because when they aren't doing well, then it's really hard to navigate systems when your mental health is affected or if you're having houseless issues and you're suffering in society, right? And if you have somebody that you know, wants to help you and cares about you and has empathy to help you navigate those systems, you're gonna get the best outcomes. So that's some of the stuff that we wanna work around. Do we have room in our Veterans Village for more or are we, are we at capacity? We, normally they're at capacity and there's wait lists. Is there room to put more um, shelters on that property, on the veteran side that's already established? Is there room for that? Great question, and I'll look into that when we're out there collaborating with them and ask okay. them that question. And then um, one, one just thought as a, you know, uh, I'm, I'm new to the millet. Well, not new because I've always um, I had an affinity and cared for the men and women that served this country or have served this country and many people that I love in my life um, have. Uh, and, you know, I'm a, I'm a new naval officer, so this is a whole new perspective. This is my, this is my second veterans, let me think. No, this is my first Veterans Day as a member of the United States Navy Reserves as an officer. So this is um, a, unique, a, unique, a unique time for me as I reflect back on why I joined to serve um, and even honor the service of Commissioner Scholl and all of the, um, the men and women in this room when they decided to, to, to kind of make sacrifices for public service and um, the ideals that we stand for here in, in the United States. Um, you know, I'm still really concerned about, we talked about a little about suicide rates. Um, we lose 17 members, uh, active service members right now daily in the United States to suicide. We recently just lost five in the state of Washington, um, kind of like a, uh, like a, kind of like a, kind of a, uh, unfortunately a skyrocketing kind of event where the numbers were, were are way too high. And I know that it's, co it's a complicated thing that we all want, are trying to deal with. I just wanna better understand the services and supports with somebody struggling with suicidal ideation, specifically as service members, what's available to them. Um, and uh, how, you know, how do we, how do we uh, continue to try to improve and intervene before uh, that tragedy happens? So I, I can speak to the case that we had where the um, veteran, actually a female veteran reached out to our veterans employment specialist, Aubrey, who was in the room. Um, she reached out and was able to get into a VA hospital for treatment. So that, that was that particular case. The other case, uh, the veteran reached out it was a homeless veteran and she was sheltered. She reached out for one of her children who was struggling uh, in a sheltered environment and we were able to contact the 24-hour crisis line, our urgent mental health clinic here in Clackamas County and get services provided for that family right away. Um, in H3S, we do a lot of training. We do men a mental health first aid class. We do a QPR class, uh, which is basically teaching us how to ask the question, do you have thoughts of self-harm? Are you considering ending your life? Uh, that may sound harsh, but it comes into play many times. When I started at the county just over, just around six years ago, what I learned was that the highest demographic for suicide are unemployed men between the ages of 40 and 55. And because we're in employment, we've taken that very seriously, and then we're also working with veterans. So having all of our staff trained how to ask the question. We also have training in reducing access to lethal means. And I will tell you that, um, Many times our veterans have firearms. It's an artful conversation to talk with them about their firearms and how we can get those firearms secured for them. Uh, and we do have some members of the veteran community that work in uh, munitions work. They're working at gun stores and they have happily agreed to temporarily um, take, at, take control of that weapon for the veteran, they can retrieve it at any time, yeah. but while it is at, while they're having those suicidal thoughts, we can protect that veteran by reducing access to lethal means. We have medication boxes that where uh, lethal medications can be locked up um, by that, you know, grandma might be on a medication that we don't want everyone to have access to. We can ensure mm -hmm. that those medication lock boxes are in the home. So we do have some resources that H3S has provided. We have uh, gun locks. We have all types of things that we can access um, and do access. I'm so glad that you brought that up because 
we know that like when you hit that moment of that dark of a despair moment and that and that it seems so overwhelming in that moment that if you can just have one barrier block that makes it a little bit harder for you until we can get you or you can get out of that space that ha is so dark it's enough for your life to be saved uh, and to rethink and to reset right and so i think that you make a really good point with having safe storage so thank you for that uh, the, and um yeah once again everybody here in the in the audience and i'll probably speak to this at closing remarks today but thank you again for your service it's an honor to be in the room with you today um and uh uh thank you again for coming and um happy veterans day to everybody in clackamas county Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming today, and thank you for all our veterans in the uh, audience. Um, I hope that you can stay for public co uh, comments uh, to tell us a little bit about yourselves as we move on through this meeting. We'll try and do it quickly. But uh, I'm so happy you're here. Thank you for your service and for everything you've done for our country. You are loved, and you are respected, and you are honored. Thank you. Gary, what's... Next. Next is another presentation. This one is on the 2023-2024 property tax statements for Clackamas County residents. Presenting will be Bronson Rueda, who's the Clackamas County Assessor. Thank you, Gary. Good morning, Chair Schrader, members of the board. My name is Bronson Rueda, the Clackamas County Assessor and Tax uh, Collector. I want to start off um, saying thank you Commissioner West for his service, current service, and I, I'm a four-year veteran myself, so from one veteran to another, I want to say thank you to the veterans that are present. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Yeah. And I'm here today to give a update, brief update on the Clackamas County uh, 2023 tax season. And do I have control of this up here? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. And just so you know, this is about 10 to 11 minutes, so sit back and, and enjoy the ride. Popcorn, please. <laughs> <laughs> so, so far this year, um, I'm happy to report that everything is going well. The tax roll was certified with Clerk McMillan on Monday, October 10th. My yearly press release was submitted on Thursday, October 19th and property tax statements were mailed two days, Friday, October 20th, and Monday, October 23rd. Property taxes are due November 15th, and if you pay in full, you get that 3% discount. I do have a few slides this morning that I'll be diving into property tax data, but first I wanna talk about a question I often get asked, and that is why are my property taxes going up more than 3%? All right, there we go. So I don't know if you recall, uh, commissioners, but uh, we talked about three weeks ago about uh, property tax law, and one of the, the big misconceptions, in my opinion, in Oregon is that people think property taxes can only go up 3% a year. That is simply not true. The fact is property taxes can go up more than 3% per year, and this slide covers those examples, those reasons. I'm going, to cover, I'm going to cover the first two. Those are the major reasons. Number one is changes to your property. That can be everything from building a new house on a vacant lot to making major renovations to your home to building an ADU in your backyard or somewhere on your property. Those changes to your property will trigger a, um, an exception event, what we call it, and that will increase your taxes more than 3% a year because it adds value to your home, to your property. The second reason up there is new money measures. So money measures are passed by the voters in Clackamas County, and whether it's a new bond or a new local option or even an increase to a current local option, those um, trigger a situation where you're, if you live in that district, your property taxes most likely will go up more, th more than 3%. So if you receive any calls, which I, I think you do, or emails, Feel free to field those questions or forward them to our office, and we can talk with those taxpayers that want to know why, that their, why their property taxes went up more than 3%. All right, this slide, you're looking at 20, 
uh, changes in bonds and local options for this current year. These aren't all the changes, but they're the 20, 20 highest changes. And if you look on the right side of the slide, 2023 change, you'll, you'll see whether it's an increase or a decrease in change. And we only have one new bond this year. That's fourth from the top, City of Tualatin. And that's uh, 26 cents per thousand of assessed or per thousand of assessed value that it will go up, and that's for park improvement. And granted, we, we don't have very many accounts in Tualatin, but we do have some. So this is um, part of the population that may give you a call or send an email as to why their property taxes went up more than 3%. Referring to the bottom four rows on the slide, there are three new local options and one local option increase. The largest one, second from the bottom, is the Sherwood School District. That's up $1.50. This local option is $1.50 per thousand of assessed value. And uh, to put things in perspective, to do the quick math, take that $1.50, move the decimal, point, decimal place over two spots, so you have $150. Apply that $150 to every 100,000 of assessed value, and that's what the increase in your taxes will be for that bond measure. So if you have a $400,000 assessed value house, add that $150, you're looking at $600 of an increase on your property tax bill just for that bond measure. So that's, this is a huge increase yeah. for, for this segment of the county. Again, a small portion of accounts, but still we do have some. The last one I wanna to bring to your attention on this slide is the Clackamas Fire District. It's 52 cents, uh, fourth from the bottom. It's 52 cents per thousand, and almost half the county, uh, half the accounts in our county are in this fire district, so you may receive some calls regarding this increase. And again, you can send those my way. We can fill those calls. Thank you. All right, here is information I think you may be highly interested in. Looking at the upper right-hand corner, the $164 million, that's the amount of our property taxes that are collected this year that will go towards the county general fund, which I believe is what, as commissioners, you have control over deciding where that goes in our yearly budget process. And that amount is up just over 5% over last year. Okay. All right, I like this slide. This is something that I have in my property tax town hall every year. I think it's the third slide in my presentation, but it covers, on the, on the left, you can see 6.1% increase in real market value as of January 1st, 2023, and that's compared to a 17% increase the previous tax year. So you can see appreciation is still happening as of January 1st, 2023 in our county, just not the same um, high clip that it was the year before. Looking at the right-hand side of the screen, we have uh, 27 new subdivisions as of the assessment date. And compared to last year, um, we had 32 new subdivisions. 900 new homes built last year, 1,372. And $1.4 billion in assessed value for that new construction. And this is all new construction um, our field appraisers go out and value this every year. And so again, this, is, this shows that, that um, proof that assessed values are, or real market values are going up this year, just not at the high pace as it was last year. Okay. All right, there is a lot of data on this slide. I'm not gonna cover everything, but if you do have a question that on something I don't cover, let me know. It's a three-year rolling history of certified uh, of the certified tax roll up in the upper left hand um, column 2023 the real market this year was over 117 billion dollars and again that's our appraisers um, valuing that that uh, much real estate each year in our county the imposed tax which is a couple rows down imposed tax this year is 1 billion 128 million six hundred and seventy seven thousand four hundred and twenty nine dollars so that about 87 percent of that amount will be collected by the end of this month so in a, in a five week in a five week time frame that'll be about 980 million dollars that our office collects 
And then um, the treasurer, Brian Nava, which I believe is in the audience behind me, his office distributes, distributes that money to our local taxing districts. The last row I want to bring to your attention, the last two rows actually, are the second and third row from the bottom. These are the number of accounts. We have about 170,000 accounts in Clackamas County. These are the number of accounts where taxes will have increased over 3%. Um, this year. And you can see that's over 80% of the accounts in Clackamas County. So another, another trigger that you may get some calls or emails about this. And again, um, if you can't field those, send them, send them our way and we'll be happy to talk to those customers to explain, walk them through the tax and explain why their property taxes went up more than 3%. All right, um, second to the last slide. And I know uh, Chair Smith is on the line, and last year, Chair Smith, even though I'm not making direct eye contact with you, but last year, um, I think you had some um, aversions towards um, having a property tax statement delivered to you um, online instead of in the mail. And so I wanted to cover this information again in case you had any further questions or um, that, that you had for me. But our e-notices is a platform that we offer all of the account holders in Clackamas County where you have the choice to receive your property tax statement online instead of a paper statement in the mail. And so I signed up for the service last year. So I have firsthand knowledge that it's very convenient, it's easy to use. You have a unique registration code on your tax statement that you use that code to go to enotices.online.com and you sign up. If you, if you have trouble with it, call our office, we'll walk you through it. Um, but I received my tax statement on October 23rd uh, in my inbox this year, which is a lot sooner than people received it in the mail. And we do receive a lot of emails and calls you know, late October, early November, where's my tax statement? I can't find my tax statement. I moved and out of town, but I still own property in Clackamas County and I never received my tax statement. If you sign up for e-notices, you'll have that access to your tax statement via email that takes you to our portal, you know, before you would have received it in the mail. So, so you, you will have no issues um, going forward if you are one of those people, especially that moved out of state or have multiple properties. Last slide, give us a call if you have any questions. I do wanna point out that we are open tomorrow, even though most of the county is closed for um, Veterans Day, observance of Veterans Day tomorrow. We're open tomorrow from 7.30 to 5 p.m. And we are closed Friday. Okay. So um, if you do wanna come in, we'll be here. And then um, do you have any questions? I, I do have one question. Can you ex explain the notion of compression? Sure. Let yeah, me. Because that's one thing I think that, um, that people don't fully understand. I'm going to, I'll bring up the slide where it shows compression for you, Chair Schrader. Okay. So Chair Schrader is asking about compression. So if you look, it's the fourth, fifth uh, line from the top, it says compression. This year we had over $10 million in compression. We could probably talk about 10 minutes or more on this topic, so I'll try to give a, a high level just, summary. Just, just a high level, yeah. Com compression is something that happens from measure five, which was a measure that passed in 1990. It's in our Oregon constitution and it provides tax limitations. Again, not a 3% tax cap on your, on your yearly tax bill, but tax limitations that are applied to the real market value on your tax statement. You have two categories. You have general government and education. The education um, total is $5 per thousand of real market value is the max that you can pay in tax on that category. And for general government, it's $10 per thousand um, in that category. So if you have, if you're, if the taxes that, your tax limitation is met and your actual taxes, typically due to local options, 
go above those thresholds, then that creates compression and the actual tax you pay is down here instead of what's calculated up here. And so when the market, if the market declines like it did in 2009, 10, 11 time period, the real market value dips down and down, getting closer to the assessed value that creates more compression. And so in times like this, where property values are appreciating, the real market value creates more separation from the assessed value, and that typically reduces the amount of compression that we have on the tax roll. Well, thank you for that, because I think, I, I think there's some. And, oh, Gary, yes. Chair Smith would like to speak. Yes. Chair Smith. Uh, hello, all. Bronson Marine, thank you for coming and giving this important presentation today. I think it's important uh, that everybody can listen to this and at least try to understand our taxation and assessment uh, activities in your office. Yes, tax revenues are up this year, as you say, because of growth and some bonds. But all of that money, the billion, over billion dollars that Clackamas County collects, it pretty much goes right back out the door. And the general fund available to uh, balance our budget is just a small percentage of the overall tax collected. I want to be clear on that. And by the way, <clears throat> thank you again for having the online portal for people to pay the taxes. I see that has increased by about four times on that. However, I must say, last week I visited your office and paid four different tax bills. And the reason why it was in person because we have some elderly people in the family. Two of those tax bills I paid were from 90 plus year old people who really don't have access to the online portal and your uh, person who waited on me at the front counter was delightful. And thank you very much for doing that. And uh, thank you all for your good work. The fact that you're working on a county holiday means a lot to me personally, and I'm sure the people coming into the office will enjoy that too. And thanks again. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you, Chair Smith. And my colleague, what would you like to say? Two questions. Hi. Um, one is, uh, do we see a significant savings as taxpayers when people decide to go through the e-statements? I know printing's becoming more and more expensive, mail's becoming more expensive. So what kind of savings are we seeing um, uh, as taxpayers because we're not mailing out these statements? So I don't have numbers in front of me, Commissioner West, but with each person that signs up for e-statements, there's less mailing, there's less printing, so there is a savings, but I don't have the... Do you know the cost per mailer? I don't have, I don't have okay. that cost right here in front of me, um, no. My second question, um, do we ever, we always get to see it go up by at least 3%. Do we ever see it go down? Do we ever get to say, hey, we, there's, there's no reason to increase it by 3% this year. Do we ever say steady or go down? So just so we're clear, your, your question I think was for us is, is there a reason that you, you don't increase it? Yes. So, so I, I personally don't. I know you don't. We don't, we don't <laughs> increase it. We, we, rates are applied to values per Oregon statute. So we, we administer the property tax laws of Oregon. We, we don't um, make the laws. But if you're looking at the slide that's still up there, it shows the number of accounts that went down more than 3%. So 4% of taxpayers in 2023 saw a decrease in their taxes? Right. And is that because their assessed value went down or? No, it's because in the district they live in, there can be a variety of reasons, first yeah. of all. But the most likely reason is that the district that they live in, the, they have a multiple number of districts that tax them. Mm. Um, some go up, some go down, but more of them went down instead of up. And so that causes a decrease in in that three percent. Like a bond is done or the levy didn't get renewed right. or right. but in the base rate of property taxes do we ever see that decrease? So the base rate you're talking about the permanent tax yeah. rates that yeah. each no uh, permanent tax rates each district uh, typically levies that I've seen the full amount of their permanent tax rate. There's one district that didn't last year, but I think they upped it this year. Okay. Um, and I know I'll mention the other reason that taxes can go up less than 3% is typically with business personal property, because right. business personal property is a depreciating asset instead of appreciating, typically appreciating like real, real estate, real market. Um, and so um, that business personal property, those accounts typically, if they don't add anything, 
we'll see a decrease in um, from that 3%. Okay, is it fair to say that in Oregon, um, it always gets a raise every single year? The way the property tax, uh, property tax system yeah. is um, crafted for residential real, real estate right now, mm -hmm. if the market is going up, then yes, it's gonna be, for the most part, 3% increase. I don't know, government's the only entity I know of where they can have horrible outcomes and bad performances and still get an annual raise. But uh, that's not on you. <laughs> like, that's just my opinion. I'm opining there, but. Um, I will tell you, Commissioner West, before um, 1997 when Measure 50 was in place, taxes were based off of real market value, which was, which was a um, rate-based system, and so a levy-based system. And so if you're looking at this year compared to last year, this year, um, real market value went up 6%. six percent. The year before went up 17%. So imagine your taxes going up that 17%. Yeah. There would be a lot of people, I imagine, that wouldn't like that. And so totally that's, that's one of the reasons why Measure 50 came about in 1997 was to get more consistency, more certainty in how much property taxes would go up each year. Yeah, thank you. That is very true. Thank you. I'm done. Well, thank you so much for coming today. Uh, Chair Smith, I know you're still online. Uh, and so I have a comment? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you, uh, Com Chair uh, Schrader. <clears throat> Commissioner West asked about the cost of a mailer. H however, when you pay online, you either use a credit card or a debit card. Is there a fee attached to that that the county mm -hmm. pays, or is the fee waived, or yeah, do you pass that fee back on to the person using the credit or debit card? Sure, so before I answer that directly, I think we're, we're mixing two things together and I wanna separate those. One is signing up for e-statements is how you receive your property tax bill, just receiving the bill, so that you get online. Paying your property taxes is a different item and that's what this question refers to. So paying your property taxes is something that uh, uh, Chair Smith says she, she came into the office to do. So you can still receive your property tax bill online and come in and pay your property tax bill you know, in cash or check in our office. Um, mm -hmm. So the, the question is, is there a decline or the fees? Um, if you pay your property tax bill with your credit card, which right now the only way to do that is via a portal online through our website. If you use a credit card, their credit card company charges a fee that we have no control over legally we cannot collect that fee. We cannot, um, we, we cannot use the general fund to pay those credit card fees. And so the credit, credit card companies um, aren't willing to absorb those fees um, when somebody pays their property taxes online. So that fee is passed on to the credit card holder, the credit card user. And so we don't have any control over that. And so um, they do have to pay that fee. Uh, which is 3% for a credit card. However, if you use a debit card, it's only $3. So if you do wanna pay online using your credit card, it's just a $3 fee, again, um, that the that the cardholder has to absorb. Can I ask a question on that? Yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I'm gonna, add, I'm gonna piggyback on that question. If you use like a routing number and account number, and it's, an, and it's a, a draft out of like a checking account or savings account, right. is that free? Because you're not using the Visa or Debit, you're just giving your routing and checking. Like no, that's that's, that's still a. So I have to go. I've never paid with our credit card. I, my property taxes. Okay. Um, I don't know if you can use the routing number and if there's a charge. I know you can use your debit card and credit card, but with a routing number, I'll have to get back to you on that. At least that. too personal, maybe. But often, like if I pay a utility, I just right. have saved in my. I don't PGE or Wilsonville Water, like the actual routing number and account number. You just say yes, use that account again, and you click, and it just right. it's free. I didn't know if that was a free option for people. Yeah, no, I, I use that routing number routing number option on some of the bills I pay, and um, I don't know if we have that option. And it's free to do it online and, per and go in person. Like if I bring you a check into your office, there's no charge for that. No charge. You can come into our office. You can mail it in. We have a drop box right out front of our office that you can drop it in, and as long as you do it before November 15th, you'll receive that 3% discount. Okay, okay. Oh, any more questions, Chair Smith? All right, thank you for coming today. This was very enlightening. Um, I always appreciate the, you know, seeing all of this um, to help people understand exactly 
how their taxes uh, are being managed, and then hopefully that we as commissioners are helping to spend them wisely for the services in this county. But good to see you today, Bronson. You too. Thank okay. you. Gary, what's next? Next is the consent agenda. Tony, would you please read the consent agenda? Momentarily, let me get, get it pulled up. Elected officials, item one, approval of previous business meeting minutes for the Board of County Commissioners. Human resources, item one, approval of a personal services contract with Prothman for the management of the recruiting process for county council position. Total value is $35,000 for four, eight months, funding through budgeted county general funds. Item two, ratification of the 2023-2026 labor agreement with Clackamas County Peace Officers Association for represented employees. Total value is $38,391,379 over three years. Funding is through the public safety local option levy, contract city funds, state and federal funds, fees and fines, and $27,641,792 in county general funds. Finance, item one, approval of a public improvement contract, the Hydrotemp Mechanical Incorporated for the Central Utility Plant Expansion Equipment Installation Project. Contract value is $1,194,000. Funding is through budgeted county general funds and is eligible for 50% reimbursement from the Oregon Courthouse Capital Construction and Improvement Fund. Item two, approval of a public improvement contract with Pioneer Waterproofing Company Incorporated for the removal and replacement of the public services building exterior sealant. Contract value is $172,210. Funding is through budgeted county general funds. Transportation and development item one, approval of a board order approving the subcontracting for infectious waste collection between Republic Services Incorporated and Trilogy Med Waste West Incorporated. No fiscal impact, no county general funds are involved. Item two, approval of a funding agreement with the Clackamas County Historical Society for projects that will foster an understanding of the history of the Jennings Lodge Camp Meeting Site and Retreat Center. Agreement value is $166,500. Funding is through the Jennings Lodge Camp Meeting Site and Retreat Center Education and Preservation Fund. No county general funds are involved. Health, Housing, Human Services, item one, approval to apply for a grant for overdose prevention project. Anticipated grant value is up to $766,000 for 24 months. Funding is through CARE Oregon. No county general funds are involved. Item two, approval of amendment number six, extending time and funding of an intergovernmental agreement with Tualatin Valley Fire and Rescue District for ambulance services. Amendment value is $53,010.72 for one year. Agreement value is increased to $1,247,344.22 for 11 years. Funding is through the cost savings program with AMR Northwest. No county general funds are involved. Item three, approval of a subrecipient agreement with the city of Wilsonville on behalf of its Wilsonville Community Center for services to older adults. Agreement value is $119,200 for one year. Funding is through the Federal Older Americans Act. No county general funds are involved. Item four, approval of a revenue agreement with CARE <laughs> Oregon for the Medication for Opioid Use Disorder and Primary Care Incentive Program. Estimated value is $162,000 for one year. Uh, funding is through CARE Oregon. No county general funds are involved. Five, approval, approval of amendment number two, updating language and increasing funding to a revenue intergovernmental agreement with the Oregon Health Authority for the financing of public health services. Amendment value is $1,724,072.59 for one year. Agreement value is increased to $5,463,272.18 for one year. Funding is through Oregon Health Authority, federal and state grants. No county general funds are involved. Item six, approval of amendment number one, extending time and increasing funding to a technology services contract with Conduit and Healthy Communities Corporation for the Public Health Community Data Dashboard. Amendment value is $29,818 for one year. Contract value is increased to $177,318 for six years. Funding is through the State of Oregon Public Health Modernization. No county general funds are involved. 
Item 7, approval of an intergovernmental agreement with the Sunrise Water Authority for Low Income Household Utility Assistance Program. Agreement value is $5,250 for one year. Funding is through the Sunrise Water Authority. No county general funds are involved. Madam Chair, that concludes the list. That is wonderful. Does any commissioner want to remove anything from the consent agenda? Oh, hearing none, can I have a motion? Uh, I move that we approve the consent agenda as read. I, I second the motion. Okay, it's been moved by Commissioner West and seconded by Chair Smith. Could you please call the poll? Chair Smith. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Chair Schrader. Aye. It is approved. Now we will recess as the Board of County Commissioners and convene as the Water Environment Services Board of Directors. So Gary, what's next? Next is the Consent Agenda for Water Environment Services. Tony, would you please read the Consent Agenda? Two items. Item one, approval of a contract with DECA Architecture Incorporated for engineering services necessary to design the Kellogg Administration Building Remodel. Total value is $390,985 for 2.2 years. Funding is through Water Environment Services Sanitary Sewer Construction Fund. No county general funds are involved. Item two, approval of amendment number nine with Consor North America Incorporated to add upgrades for two additional pump stations in the pump station rehabilitation and upgrades project. Amendment value is $430,777 in two years, increasing total contract value to $3,052,360 over six years. Funding through Water Environment Services, Sanitary Sewer Construction Fund, no county general funds are involved. Thank you, Tony. Does any director wish to remove any items? Hearing uh, no objection, can I have a motion, please? I move to approve, we move, is that right? We move to approve the consent agenda as read. For water I'll second the motion. Uh, it's been moved by Commissioner West and seconded by Chair Smith. Uh, Tony, can you call the poll, please? Chair Smith. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Chair Schrader. Aye. The motion is approved. I will now adjourn as the Water Environment Services Board and reconvene as the Board of County Commissioners. And next up, Gary, is public communication. Am yes. I correct? Yes, yes. Great. This portion of the agenda shall be limited to items of county business which are properly the object of board consideration and should be nonpartisan in nature, as the BCC is a nonpartisan governing body under Oregon Revised Statutes and County Code. Testimony is limited to three minutes. Comments shall be respectful and courteous to all. As a reminder, you can email submissions for public communication at bcc at clackmas.us, and these will be accepted as part of the public record. I will now open the meeting for public testimony. I will take in-person testimony first, and I do not have any blue cards in front of me, so uh, I guess we're gonna have a quiet day today, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, Tony, is there anybody online? Not at this time, Madam Chair. Okay, We're moving right along. Um, okay, so uh, this is the end of my list uh, to do this today. So I will now close public communication and the meeting and we will move on and Gary, what's next? Next is county administrator up update, that's me. I like to share the good work of our county employees during my time. Today I wanna to recognize Julie Hamilton. She's an environmental health program manager in our public health division of health, housing, and human services. She recently received the Metorious Service Award from the Oregon Environmental Health Association, a statewide association. Environmental health is a branch of public health that monitors or mitigates factors in the environment that affect human health and disease. Julie received this statewide award, the Metorious Service Award, which is given in recognition for outstanding dedication and the pursuit of environmental health excellence. Congratulations to Julie Hamilton from our Health, Housing, and Human Services Department. Next, several staff members in our Building Codes Division of our Department of Transportation and Development were recognized by a well-satisfied customer. The customer wrote, I want to put in a good word for building code inspectors Alan Davidson, 
Davidson, Don Countryman, Kevin Streb, and Kelsey McNall. Each inspector took the time to explain why the inspection failed, why it is important to have the proper electrical breaker installed, and also to have the proper structural support required to handle high wind storms or other situations that require a strong support structure. The telephone conversation with Kelsey McNall was very informative. She sent me the inspection reports, gave me a link that will help me deal with the contractor who is not completing the work and not answering my emails. All of these employees were very courteous and professional. Thank you to Alan, Don, Kevin, and Kelsey from our Transportation and Development Department for their excellent customer service, as all our employees do, I believe. Uh, uh, that's the end of my report. I do want to share, commissioners, as you know, there will be no board meetings next week, November 13th through 16th, as you will all be at you will all be attending the Oregon Association. Let's see, the Association of Oregon Counties uh, annual conference. This is a gathering of all county commissioners in the state of Oregon in Eugene. Uh, so there will be no business meeting next week, November 16th. The next business meeting of the board will be Wednesday. November 22nd at 10 a.m. It will not be on Thursday that week because that day is Thanksgiving. So next board meeting, Wednesday, November 22nd. And that is my update. Uh, back to you, Commissioner Schrader, and finally is Commissioner Communications. All right, now we have Commissioner Communication. Uh, Chair Smith, do you have anything you would like to say? Uh, thank you, Commissioner Schrader. I just would like to say thank you to all the veterans. It's very important. Uh, in my life, I've had many family members serve uh, in the military and during the wars, and that's always been um, a legacy that's been passed down in our family with many important stories that we have shared over the generations. And thank you for that very much. And Commissioner Schrader, thank you for doing the heavy lifting today and uh, chairing the meeting for me while I'm here uh, trying not to cough into the microphone. Thank you all, and have a good extended weekend. Thank you, Chair Smith. Get better, fast. <laughs> I like it when you have the gavel, quite frankly. So, <laughs> Although it's a, a pleasure occasionally to fill in, but uh, we want you back, we want you better, and uh, it's uh, get some rest. Chair West. Do you have anything you want to Commissioner say? West. Commissioner West. Commissioner <laughs> West, sorry. Don't put that on me. <laughs> Never mind. I need, a, I need another cup of coffee. You're fine. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, thank you. It's been a really, really busy week. Um, and we spoke a little bit about that earlier, so I won't rehash what I said a day or two ago when we were kind of going through the different things we were doing. Um, I want to make sure that um, people do understand that we have a lot of services for our veterans in the county. We really care about um, the well-being of our veterans and those that have served our country. And uh, there, so please look into that. You can find a lot of this information on the Clackamas County website. Um, we have resources for housing. We have helps. Um, for people to get um, workforce training, jobs, things like that. We have uh, how to access your VA benefits. Um, so please, uh, if you have a loved one that needs support, we have support, we wanna help. Um, or if you're a veteran and you happen to be listening, um, we, we, we value you as a county and we wanna make sure that we're uh, uh, um, coming alongside you and helping you be successful in your endeavors. Um, and uh, we can, we can uh, kind of strive together. So that's our goal here in Clackamas County. Um, I look forward to AOC. I know there's been a lot of conversations. Um, I've been in a lot of uh, around AOC focusing on also with the League of Oregon Cities on housing, addiction, and homelessness. I've been in Salem at the majority of the steering committee for AOC on this topic as we meet with leaders across the county on a local level on um, some amendments, fixes, and structural changes to Measure 110. I personally believe that um, we need to keep the funding source in place. Um, so that's not a full repeal, but we do need to repeal, as we've said previously, provisions within Measure 110. So those are um, those provisions that don't allow us to have an effective um, law enforcement capacity to compel people to treatment care and care. Um, the goal here in Clackamas County is that everybody who needs it has access to recovery services. Um, and that's the compassionate way to do this at any point of their journey in recovery we have a place for you to access support um, and so that we can help you have a self-sufficient um, and whole life. We understand that addiction is a disease process and we look at it as a chronic treatment need 
um, at least I do in, here, and um, I'll speak for myself, uh, but I think my commissioners would agree with me, um, my, fellow, my fellow colleagues. So I just wanna make sure that as we move forward as a county, we are looking for solutions because the, here's the bottom line. When the legislature passes a bunch of stuff or a ballot measure goes through, here we are at the local level stuck with actually having to implement and deal with it, right? And so we want resources that allow us to continue to be successful in the county. And I think that that's significant amendments, I'm gonna call it that way, or fixes. I think just what we had what we had before Measure 110 was also ranking us still 49th in the nation in access to care, so I don't wanna go back before. I don't wanna do what we've done with Measure 110, but I do want us to be a re continue to strive as a recovery county, and we've explained what that means in our resolutions and whatnot. We also have a webpage for everybody listening where you can see from our early on resolution to all the things we're planning on doing, all the different steps we've taken, that is on our website to make sure that we're communicating clearly how we're tackling these problems in Clackamas County. Um, so yeah, I look forward to being in AOC with all of you guys, um, especially you, Commissioner Schrader, <laughs> uh, and uh, we'll uh, continue to do good, do good work. So um, thank you, and everybody have a great weekend and a happy Veterans Day. All right, and uh, thank you, Commissioner West. You're, you're fun to work with. I always enjoy Enjoy your company, and I'm looking forward to the Association of Oregon Counties with you. And uh, I always uh, appreciate your enthusiasm and all the work you're doing on recovery. I think you're changing the landscape, not just for Clackamas County, but for other counties across our state. So kudos to you for all that work you've been doing. Um, I'm just going to end by saying a few things about uh, my involvement in veteran services. And a number of years ago, Governor Kulongowski, when I was a commissioner, appointed me to his council on uh, veterans. And we worked with the National Guard and uh, uh, the Army and other uh, branches of the service to come together to talk about what was happening to our uh, folks who were coming home from Iraq and Afghanistan. Uh, I was interested because my war was Vietnam. And um, I saw a number of uh, uh, young people come home in my age group, uh, and including my brother-in-law coming back from that war uh, with serious issues. And, um, uh, and, and our Vietnam veterans were not treated uh, with the respect that they deserved for the service, whether or not you agreed with the Vietnam War. Uh, really, they, were, they came home to um, uh, a lack of respect, and that always pretty much stayed with me. So when the governor appointed me to this group, we worked together to pull um, a whole stream of policies that we were, were going to introduce to the, to the state legislature um, that were pro-veteran. And that was everything from, um, you know, it, when, you, when you see a veteran's license plate, that was one of our bills. And that was not only to honor veterans, it was also to give public safety, for example. Uh, if they pulled somebody over, they, they knew that was a veteran and um, that they had served the country. It was kind of a signal that, um, these, that our veterans needed uh, that level of respect, but a whole host of bills came out of that work, and it was actually one of the reasons why I left this, um, I left this, the county for a few years, uh, was because I had the opportunity to go to the state senate, and I was the chair of the Veterans Services Committee down there, the first chair. I uh, worked with, uh, actually, Senator Brian Boquist, who is still a good friend, and uh, Lori Monis Anderson, who was also a veteran. And uh, we really worked hard to pass uh, the first set of legislation uh, down there that was really pro-veteran. And uh, that's a legacy project. And uh, when I left that, um, that role, I had the honor of beginning, of getting a coin and patches from every, uh, every uh, <laughs> National Guard unit that had served in Iraq and Afghanistan. And I will tell you today, it's one of my most treasured possessions or, or gifts that has been given to me uh, because it was so meaningful that here I was um, making a change for the betterment of the people that have served. 
And I'm going to tell you, since I have the podium, I'm not giving it up yet, Gary. Um, I have two stories. <laughs> I have two stories I want to tell. One was when I was door knocking, both door knocking when I was running for office, and I met an elderly gentleman at the door. Turns out he was a World War II veteran at Pearl Harbor, and he was delightful. He was funny. He was whatever. And and his comment, he was he was there, and he said, "Well, uh, it was always remarkable that he said this to me." He said, "One minute, I was on the boat." Next minute, I was in the water swimming for my life, okay? <laughs> and that was, and I just didn't know what to say, but how remarkable that I got to meet this veteran on the door who, who served his country during the Second World War. And another time I was door knocking and I met a young man at the door who had just gotten back from Iraq. And, um, you know, I told him, yeah, we're doing all this work. Um, we support you. Hang in there, you know. I, I I was really trying to honor his service, and then uh, a number about a year later, I got a uh, uh, got a letter from his father that I still keep, and he said that um, my talking to him, uh, he said changed his life. He said he was feeling alone. He you know, felt nobody cared. That um, you know, there he was in in the middle of sandstorms and why, you know, why he was there. And he wrote me a note and said he had gone on to uh, go back to college and become uh, an engineer. And it was very kind of his father to write me and say, I think you really helped. And those are the things I think in our lives that happen where sometimes you never really know what's going to happen uh, when you uh, reach out and touch people and um, you know, just a good word, a kind word, um, can make a world of difference. So uh, I don't like uh, talking too much about myself, but I will tell you, uh, I am I am very gratified that I, I like to think that uh, we've made a difference here, not only in the state but in this county. Yeah. And bless you for being in the service too, you Navy guy, you <laughs> cool. <laughs> All right. Gills now. You got gills. You know, now. you know, at AOC, I, I do think that you have an opportunity to wear a certain pair of boots. Oh, jeez. I think okay. it's a perfect <laughs> opportunity for some special boots to make a debut. Yeah, yeah. We have we we have our cowboy boots. Yeah, I, yeah. Think, I think we should uh, we, uh, do a boot day. Okay, we will. I promise you that will happen. They, should, they also should never have left us alone on this diet. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know. Gary's giving us the evil eye right now. The, Where's hey, this going? We're the fun commission. We say. are. Everybody knows it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you are too, Tootie. I promise. Okay, Tootie. Okay. We love you. All right. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, we are adjourned. Okay.